Well, it's both in, in yeah. some sense. Um, there, there are always a, some conditionals on a, on a statement like that so that aperture, the light gathering component, of the, usually it's the mirror these days, the larger that is, uh, the finer, the, uh, the sharper image you can make. Now, usually uh, before ap we had adaptive optics, if you were in outer space, the fact that you didn't have any atmosphere was a huge advantage. But now with adaptive optics, we can actually uh, remove much of the uh, blurriness due to the Earth's atmospheric turbulence, and then it really just turns into a question of size. And the bigger the aperture is, the sharper an image you can make. I'm trying to think of an analogy that would... I'm trying to find a good metaphor. It's not, it's not just the photon gathering capacity, because in fact, uh, if you want to make really huge apertures, uh, uh, for instance, the ALMA array, a very large array in New Mexico, the ALMA submelometric telescope uh, is literally hundreds of meters across, and there's no way to make a dish that big. So what they, in fact, do is break the dish into little tiny sub-dishes, and although there are some, some disadvantages to taking your aperture and Chop, chopping your mirror up into little pieces and laying them all over the ground, the fact that you can have effectively an aperture that's 100, 200, 300, 600 meters across increases the sharpness dr dramatically. And so the, in the earliest days, people really just have two little tiny telescopes, but they put them you know, 200 meters apart and they would affect, for, in some aspects, would have the capabilities of a 200 meter mirror, which Nobody knows how to build.